Are you brand new to photo editing and not sure where to even get started? Perhaps you purchased Luminar Neo and need some guidance? Or maybe you just want to keep it simple and do some basic editing of your images. If you said yes to any or all of those questions, then keep watching. Help is on the way. I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor, and if you want to learn all about photo editing and how to make your images pop, you're in the right place. So if you're ready to learn how to do some really quick and easy basic editing in Luminar Neo with just one tool, let's get started. I'm going to show you five tips, including how to fix dark images and light images, adjust contrast to increase or decrease it, and how to work with color. The tool we're going to be using for all of these things is Develop Raw. I'm going to start with this one here. It's an image I took in Trinidad, Cuba, and it's really colorful. So it's going to be a great example for working with color. When you first open an image inside the edit panel, I recommend turning on or showing the histogram. You can get to that from the view menu and just choose show histogram at the bottom. If you're not familiar with the histogram and how to use it, I have a full video on that. I'll put a link in the description area below for you. Basically, the histogram is a reference of the tones in your image. On the left, it represents black or dark tones, and on the right, white or light tones, and in the middle, everything else in between. So use that when you're editing to make sure that your edits are accurate. The tool we're going to use, as I mentioned, is Develop Raw. You'll find the Develop Raw tool right here in Essentials. If you don't see the raw part and it just says Develop, it probably means that you're either working on a JPEG or possibly a DNG or a raw camera format that Luminar doesn't recognize. So make sure you're using raw files. There's only a couple of minor differences between Develop Raw and Develop. I'll show you as we go along. To start, just open the tool by clicking it. You may see some of these panels expanded. Anytime you see a little triangle over here on the right, you can expand that. We're going to be looking at color for this one. So expand the color section. This is where you'll notice a difference if you shot raw versus JPEG. If you shot a raw file, when you pull this menu down, you will see the same options that you'll see in your camera for white balance presets. If you only see as shot and custom, that's because again, it's not recognizing that you have a raw file. To adjust the color, you can choose one of the presets. If that's an option for your file, I'm going to choose daylight. You can see it shifted the color a little bit more blue. Watch what happens to the numbers here as I choose another option. Let's try shade. See it increased the yellow and the image itself is warmer. So you could quickly and easily change the color by choosing one of these. I'm going to start with daylight because it's probably the closest. The next thing you can do is try the targeted adjustment tool, which is right here. And it looks like a little eyedropper. When you click it, it sort of becomes detached. And as you move it around the image, you'll see this little square attached to it that says pick a target neutral. So you need to select something that is neutral, meaning no color. So white, gray, or black, something that you know has no color. So I'm going to try the edge of this building because it looks pretty white. Notice it shifted the tones a little bit to do it again. Just select the eyedropper and pick a different spot. I'm going to try this one. I think this one is probably meant to be more beige. So it sort of made the image a bit cooler. If you click on a wrong color, I'll show you what happens. Let's try this yellow here. It's going to try and remove the yellow in the image and you'll get the opposite, which is very blue like so. So that's not really what I'm looking for here. Let's go back to try something neutral. I could try the fence post, for example, that looks pretty good. Then to fine tune your color, once you're happy with choosing either a preset or the eyedropper or combination of both, you can then adjust the sliders as well. Temperature, as you can see by the color on the slider itself, goes from blue on the left to yellow on the right. And tint goes from green to magenta. 
So if you just drag it, you can see the color change. Let's try tint. One tip I will give you, and this goes back to my days of color darkroom work, is that if an image looks too cool and you want to warm it up, you want to add both yellow and green because believe it or not, magenta is actually a cool color. So let's see if I warm this one up, I'm gonna add yellow and green. Now if I wanna cool it down, the opposite, we're gonna add blue or magenta or a combination of both. The sliders below, I generally never increase the saturation. And once we get to doing tone control, the next point we're gonna look at, you'll see why I never increase the saturation slider. If anything, I take it down to the negative side most of the time. I'm just gonna leave this one neutral. To reset a slider, just double click on the dot. The difference between saturation and vibrance is saturation affects all colors equally. And if you go to zero, you end up with a black and white. It's not the best way to do black and white though. Vibrance, on the other hand, affects more muted tones. Notice that it's affecting the blue sky more than it is the yellow building. So if you want a bit more color in your image in the areas that are faded out, try Vibrance before you try Saturation. If you want to see a before and after, just press the backslash on your keyboard, or you can press and hold the eyeball down at the bottom here to get a preview before and after. Let's move on to the next image. I'm going to go back to the catalog. I use a lot of keyboard shortcuts. If you'd like a free Luminar Neo keyboard shortcuts PDF, I'll put some information in the description area below on how you can get it. Let's look at the waterfall image next. The first thing you'll notice when we open it and look at the histogram is that everything is all bunched up to the left, which means that there's a lot of dark tones and not much else and there's also nothing light or white colored. That tells us this image is underexposed. So it's a fairly common problem a lot of photographers have. So if you have some images like this that are dark, we're gonna fix it. Open Develop Raw, and this time we're going to use the light panel. There's three different sections in here that can adjust brightness or tones in your image. These sliders in the light panel, blacks and whites in this section, and the curve tool. I'll show you curves on the next image. So for now, I'm just gonna leave that one closed. A common misconception when handling underexposed images is photographers often go right for that exposure slider. Exposure actually handles the midtones more than it does the rest of the image. So I'm going to start with the white slider. White will adjust the brightest tones in your image, and I want to pull them up a little bit. So watch what happens when I increase the whites. See how the histogram is creeping up to the right and the water is getting brighter? Now I can increase the exposure and brighten it overall. One thing you want to watch out for, and I've gone extra far with the white slider on purpose here just to show you this, is that you don't get anything clipping on the white end of the scale. Clipping means no detail in that area. So if you're not sure, press the J key on your keyboard, or you can click these little circles up here in the histogram, like so. Anything that you see with a red highlight means that that's white with no detail. Blue is black with no detail. So now, knowing that, I can bring the white slider back down a little bit until I get rid of the clipping. So my suggestion and how I work is I take the whites up until I see clipping and then just bring it back down. So I want to be just sort of at the edge of clipping but not over with the whites. When I'm working with the black slider, I actually want to clip more. So when I drag it to the left, you can see the slider is darker on the left, brighter on the right, just like the histogram, it all makes sense drag it to the left, I get more black clipping. But remember how I said I don't touch the saturation slider? Let me just boost this a little bit and the shadow areas a little bit. You can see that it's also picking up these dark areas here and I've lost the blacks. So I'm gonna go further again. 
Often you'll find that when you adjust one slider and then do another one, you have to go back and readjust or tweak the first one. I call it the photo editing dance. So I'm doing the dance here. And if I turn off the clipping warnings, look at how much more saturated the colors are and you notice I didn't go to the saturation slider. When you have nice blacks in your image, your colors will pop more. So if your image is lacking color, go to the black slider and take it to the left before you go to the saturation slider. So now when we look at the histogram, we can see that it's a bit more spread out, still bunched off to the left, which is fine because the image is mostly dark. We don't have any whites clipping and we have a little bit of blacks clipping. The other slider that I adjusted here is shadows. So the other two adjust the tones closer to the middle. So keep in mind, these ones adjust the edge tones, so blacks and whites. The exposure slider adjusts the middle tones or medium gray, and the highlight slider adjusts tones that are close to brightest, but not quite. So by pulling highlights down, you can see I could pick up a little bit more detail in that waterfall. By bringing the shadows up or to the right, remember everything to the right is lighter, I'm lightening the shadows. So you could do a lot of tone control just with those five sliders. Now, if we want a little bit more contrast, use this smart contrast slider. Notice as I increase this contrast slider, what happens to the color? It's more saturated. Are you starting to get the hang of it? I'm gonna scale this contrast back to something a bit more reasonable. And let's look at the before, remember, backslash key, and after. So I've successfully brightened this underexposed image. Now let's look at the opposite problem, an image that is overexposed or too bright. When you first look at the histogram for this image, it may not look overexposed and it looks pretty even but this was a very dark scene, so I know what it should look like. Likewise, if you have a night scene that has a histogram that looks like this, it's probably too bright or overexposed. So we're going to use the curves tool this time. I'm gonna close up light and black and white and open the curve section. You'll notice there's a histogram here which matches the one up here. What you need to know about the curves tool is that it's really powerful for adjusting not only contrast, but color as well, because there are red, green, and blue curves, as well as one for overall or general tones. Let's work with general first. On the bottom here is similar to the histogram. This slider increases the blacks if I bring it in to the middle, and this one increases the whites if I bring it in to the middle. This slider in the middle affects midtones. So you notice it's brightening this way and darkening this way. You can also adjust it by grabbing the line and setting a point. So up is brighter, down is darker. So look at that. One click on one little curve and we've taken the image a whole lot darker. You can see the histogram still looks good, but now it's more representative of a dark scene which is the way I intended it when I photographed this. You can also create something called an S curve. An S curve is one that looks like an S. And what you do is you put one point and increase it or go to the plus side. And a second point, in this case, I'm just gonna move this one down and pull it down. And you end up with something that looks like an S, like this. And you can see that the contrast has been increased exponentially. So why might you use the curves tool as opposed to the sliders I just showed you? Well, the curves tool can also adjust color, like I mentioned, and you can go a lot farther with it. Let me show you an example. If we open the blacks and the whites, let's say I want more black in this image because it's too faded out. I'm going to take the black slider all the way to the left, turn on the clipping warnings, and I have a little bit of the shadows clipping but that's as far as I can go. With this one at the bottom of the curves, look how far I can go. I can literally make the entire image black. So you have more latitude with the curves tool. Something else you can do with the curves tool is actually invert it and make a negative. If you want to learn more about the curves tool and when you might use this little trick, I'll put a link to the video on the curves tool in the description area below. 
So let's just darken this again to get back to something that looks good. Maybe a little bit more contrast like so. Then if you want to shift the colors, let's say I want to adjust blue and yellow. The same thing applies here. When I go up, it makes more blue. When I go down, it makes more yellow. So if I want more yellow in my highlights, for example, I can pull this point down. And then if I want to keep the shadows blue, I can pull this one back up. Let's make an extreme example so you can really see it. Do you see what that's doing? It's making sort of what's called a cross process look. We can take it farther by using the other colors as well. I can add magenta or green to further the look like that. Of course, I'm adding contrast there and red or magenta. So I can add magenta into the shadows and red into the highlights. So if you only ever use a develop tool inside Luminar Neo, you can still get really creative with your effects. Spend some time learning how to use the curves tool. It's well worth it. In this next example, I'm going to show you how to control an image that has too much contrast. If we take a look at this scene, the sky is really bright and the shadows are really deep because it was taken at midday. I've got the clipping warnings on so you can see the highlights and now we can put it all together so we can use color and the sliders or curves or combination thereof to adjust this image. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring the highlights down. You can see that took care of the sky, then the exposure a little bit, shadows up a little bit. So bringing the highlights down or darkening them and the shadows up will lower the contrast of your image generally. You can also take this one to the left. Or if you want to use curves, you can do what's called an inverse curve. So down on the right over here, which is the highlights, and up over here, which is the shadows. Can you see how that is lowering the contrast? So S curve increases contrast, inverse S decreases it. Now I can use the highlight slider to try and control this bench a little bit. That's pretty good. Remember, I want to have a little bit of blacks clipping, so let's get a little bit of contrast back in there. I might need to use this one. There we go. And white, take it up till it clips, and then just bring it down. I'm not gonna worry about this spot on the red chair too much. It's a specular highlight, so if it's blown out, I'm not too worried about it. Let's take a look at the before and after. Maybe I darkened it a little too much. Again, it's the dance. So I thought, okay, it was good. So taking a look at the before and after frequently allows you to reassess and see how far you've come. Did you go too far or do you need to go farther? There's the before, once again, overly bright and contrasty and after. Now let's look at the opposite problem, no contrast. Before I show you this tip, I just want to mention that I'm going to give you a bonus tip at the end of the video. So make sure you stick around for that one because it's a huge time saver. Okay, in this image, we now have the opposite problem. When we look at the histogram, it tells me that it's all squished together. There's no whites and there's no blacks. So I'm going to do exactly what I just did using the curve, using the bottom here. I could use whites as well. Make sure the clippings are on. Okay, you can see those little circles and just start dragging this one. You can see it moving over here until it gets to the edge of the graph. And I see the lights on the boat are now clipping and I might stop there and then use the white slider. Eventually the sky will start clipping. So it was a very, very foggy day when I took this picture. So that looks about right. Look how far I had to come just to get some white. Now let's go with the blacks. I don't want to go too far because I want to keep detail on that boat. And then I could either lift the shadows here on the curves or just lift the shadows a bit here. See how shadows really just affects the boat? Turn off the clipping warnings. And now look at the histogram. Do you see how it represents the scene a little better? There's a spike over here for some dark areas. That's the boat. 
And then there's a huge section and spike over here on the right, which is the entire sky. That should be bright. So when we look at the before, it's dull and flat, and the after has more contrast. A couple of other things to note that are also included in the Develop RAW tool are optics. If you go into the optics panel, you can do things like fix chromatic aberration, which is a little purple or red fringe around the edges of your images, especially if you're using a wide lens and you have things like buildings or trees against a light background, look for an edge color or fringe. These two checkboxes here will help you basically eliminate it just that simply. You can also do some basic noise reduction and sharpening here. The bottom panel is for correcting tilt and perspective on buildings. If we go back to this one of the scene in Trinidad, if you want to change any of the edits that you've made, you just need to go over to this edit tab here next to tools and any edits that you made will be stacked up here. We only did develop raw, but noiseless is there by default if you want to do noise reduction as well and you have that extension, but don't worry about it for now. So if I open develop raw, you can see the color adjustments that I did are still there. But knowing what you know now, I can go in and add some more contrast with curves. Double check that I'm not clipping anything. Get a little bit of black. Then we can use this transform tool at the very bottom of the panel. What this does is it corrects building distortion or perspective if you're shooting up or down. Just click this button right here and it's that simple. You see it straightened the verticals. I can also do more adjustments if necessary using the sliders here. I did a little more advanced editing on some of the images that I just demonstrated because I wanted to show you what's possible if you take it a little bit farther using the tools inside Luminar Neo. This is the first one that you saw me do and it's just basic edits. It looks just fine. If you're happy with that, call it a day. But here's what's possible. Notice that I corrected the perspective of the buildings that I just showed you. And I also changed the sky to give it a little bit more interest. And I removed a lot of the wires in the image. Take a look at this area right here and over here compared to the original. Can you see all the wires? And now they're all gone. I also removed a person here and two people over there. See the difference? With this image of the staircase, I turned it into black and white and added a split tone and a little overlay with a flare. For the image of the red chairs, I also did a sky replacement to add a sunset and a sun flare coming from the direction where the sun would be in the image. And finally, the image of the boat, I added a texture overlay and a grunge edge. So I just want to show you those things to give you a little bit of inspiration. If you want to learn how to do all of those things, check out my Luminar Neo, the complete course. We have two free lessons for you to watch as a preview to see what it's like before you decide to purchase it. Okay, remember I said there was a bonus tip? Let me show you that. Going back to this image of the yellow bell tower, there's one more little section at the top of the develop raw profile that I didn't show you. It's the camera profile. When you're photographing, your camera has different presets for picture styles. And when you choose one, if you're shooting a JPEG, it applies to the JPEG. But when you shoot raw, it's all removed and you have to do that editing yourself. But guess what? If Luminar recognizes your camera and your camera profiles, in the pull down menu, all of your camera profiles are here under external. These are some that I've added as custom. That's a little more involved than I can show you in this video, but just know that it's possible. So let me show you what happens when I choose camera landscape. A landscape profile usually adds more blue and intensifies the greens because that's generally what's in a landscape. Let's see what happens. Watch the image. Big difference, right? And now that I've done that, I may go back here and adjust some of the other sliders because now I have too much color. So remember under color, I had turned up the vibrance. Now I don't need that. 
And if anything, we're going to take the saturation down a little bit. If we choose a different profile, portrait, for example, usually enhances tones like yellow, reds, and orange, which is in skin tone. So let's see what happens on this image. See, so the sky got lighter again, and it's probably intensifying these yellow and reds here. And of course, there's several others, including neutral, faithful, and so on. So if your camera profiles are available inside Luminar Neo, try those first. So I'm gonna go with landscape in this case and take the saturation down even a bit more. That's better. Be very careful that you don't overdo your saturation and make what I call a neon puke. I did a video talking about over editing and how to know when you've gone too far. I'll put a link for that one as well in the description below. So you've got some homework. If you haven't already upgraded from a Luminar AI or chosen a photo editing program, check out Luminar Neo. If you use my discount code DPM-NEO, you'll get a small discount on the annual plan. Then once you have it and you want to learn Luminar Neo from start to finish, get my Luminar Neo, the complete course. For more photo editing tips and learning here on YouTube, click this video now. And until next time, Take care and keep practicing.